there are two predominant mechanisms that explain why high protein intake causes postprandial high blood glucose or post meal high blood glucose. The first is that researchers have discovered that a high intake of animal protein stimulates glucagon production, which is a hormone that's secreted by the pancreatic alpha cells. Now these are the cells that are actually located right next to the beta cells inside of your pancreas. And all of them are contained within what are known as the islet of Langerhans. This is a section of your pancreas that's, that's responsible for manufacturing insulin and glucagon and another uh, hormone called somatostatin. And they're all, that's uh, the exocrine function of your pancreas that puts these hormones into your blood. Now, the question is, well, what does glucagon do? Okay, well, it promotes what's called hepatic gluconeogenesis, basically the synthesis of new, uh, new glucose. And it increases hepatic glucose production, meaning it increases the amount of glucose that your liver manufactures and the amount of glucose that your liver secretes into your blood, both of them simultaneously, okay? So in subjects that do not have diabetes, glucagon occur, glucagon stimulation occurs simultaneously with excess insulin release. So what happens is that the alpha cells manufacture more glucagon and the beta cells manufacture more insulin and the two hormones effectively cancel one another out. So more glucagon says, hey, put more glucose into the blood and more insulin says, hey, take more glucose out of the blood and the two of them effectively counteract one another. And that's why when you perform studies in people who are living without diabetes, their blood glucose looks nice and flat. But if you don't measure how much glucose and insulin is being produced, you'll never know. But in people living with type one diabetes, again, we're broken. Our pancreas does not manufacture insulin. And as a result of that, when you consume high protein meals, you see that glucagon goes up and that means that more glucose ends up in your blood. And in order to counteract that, you have to inject more insulin. So it's much more visible and much easier to see the impact of one high protein meal. Now you can see this very specific uh, increase in glucagon production in many papers in the research. Here's one paper in particular where they call it out and they demonstrate it very, very straightforward. It's called the protein content of the evening meal and nocturnal plasma glucose regulation in people living with type 1 diabetes. So if you look in the first graph, what you will see is that people who ate a low protein diet are shown with in the bottom with the white circles. People who consumed a high protein diet are shown with the black circles. On the y axis we have glucose, on the x axis we have time. So the people who ate the low protein meal ended up having a small glucose rise in the first few hours, in the first three hours after eating a meal, exactly as predicted. And then their blood glucose stayed nice and stable. And then it began rising somewhere about three o'clock in the morning. The people who ate the high protein diet had the exact same initial glucose excursion as the people eating the low, carb, uh, the, the low protein diet. And then starting at about the five hour marker is when their glucose values began rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. And they stayed higher from that point onwards throughout seven o'clock AM the next day. So if you took a look at the area under the curve for the people who are eating the high protein diet versus the area under the curve for the people who are eating the low protein diet, what you will see is that the people who ate the high protein diet had a significantly increased area under the curve because their glucose values were continuing to climb higher than the low protein group. In the next graph, what you'll see is the reason why this happened. The reason why this happened is because the amount of glucagon that those alpha cells in their pancreas secreted was significantly higher. So the high protein group ended up manufacturing more glucagon. And as a result of that, that's what caused the glucose in their blood to start increasing uh, and, and that's what caused their blood glucose values to go higher versus the people who were in the low protein group ended up with a relatively flat line glucagon response all the way through seven o'clock AM. So this is one way to demonstrate that the amount of glucagon you secrete matters and the higher your protein intake, the more likely you are to, syn to synthesize and secrete glucagon, which has negative effects on blood glucose control. Now, researchers have also estimated that approximately 20 to 40% of the protein that you directly eat is converted directly into glucose within the first eight hours following a meal. So that means that 
independent of glucagon, independent of insulin, the protein, 20 to 40% of the protein that you consume actually is just converted immediately into glucose. Now, these amino acids are known as what is called glucogenic amino acids. And glucogenic just basically means it can be the building block for glucose. And there, what happens is that when you eat protein, the glucogenic amino acids actually do get converted into glucose at a higher rate. And that will also contribute to higher blood glucose values. Neither of these are ideal responses. What happens is that when you eat a high protein meal, you see that there are multiple mechanisms. Some of them happen in your liver. Some of them happen in your muscles. Some of them happen as a result of glucagon production inside of your pancreas. The net result is that the first three hours, your blood glucose does normal things. And then starting at the three hour marker, your blood glucose continues to rise when eating a high protein meal. And when eating a low protein meal, you can limit that rise and keep your blood glucose more controllable. So I don't know about you, but you may have experimented with this yourself and found that when you're trying to eat more protein, whether it's protein from animal sources and sometimes even protein from plant sources, if there's a lot of it, that your blood glucose is just flat out harder to control. Again, it might not happen immediately within the first two to three hours, but over the course of the next 12 hours, maybe the course of the next 18 hours, maybe the course of the next 24 to 48 hours, you might find your blood glucose meter doing some funny things and ask yourself, well, why is this happening? I don't understand. Maybe I'm eating too many carbs. That's what most people make the assumption. And then they start reducing their carbohydrate intake and doing, guess what? They eat more protein. They eat more fat. And guess what? The problem gets worse. So if you identify the wrong culprit, which the ketogenic community is really good at, which the low carbohydrate community is really good at, then you end up moving in the wrong direction continuously over and over and over and over and over again. And that's going to exacerbate your blood glucose control, make it worse, and make the quality of your life go down as your chronic disease risk goes up. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.